Hi everyone, it's James here. Welcome to another video. And this is going to be the first instalment of a series that I'm hoping to uh, continue with. And uh, it's just going to be called Incomplete Collections. They're records by artists that um, <clears throat> are incomplete in my collection. As in, um, I don't have a complete set of their records. I've had this strange thing ever since I started making videos that um, it's not worth trying to show a complete collection unless you've got all of it or unless you've got most of it and you know for that reason there's there's quite a few sections of my collection that I've never uh, shown before and um, the problem is, is that it's, it's kind of it's not in my nature to be completist there are some great completists out there on the vinyl community I'm thinking you know people like Richard McCook and uh, Chris at the Vinyl Orchard um, it's not that I'm anti being completist, it's just that I'm not particularly good at it. <clears throat> um, I'm not really determined enough, you know, to seek down, uh, to seek out vinyl records. Um, I'm happy to buy them as and when they pop up, but if they don't pop up, I'm quite happy to, um, you know, have things on CD. Uh, or if they're not particularly great records in the artist catalogue, uh, I'm not fussed about having them at all. So, um, Anyway, I thought I would start with an artist whose catalogue is huge, and even if I wanted to try and complete it, it would be an absolute nightmare, and I would probably never get around to showing any of the records uh, that I had. So, um, uh, it's going to be Neil Young, and I really don't have that much uh, by Neil. Relatively speaking, obviously, he's, he's got so many records, and I've got eight of them. And they all come from the 1970s, apart from one that comes from 81. So I'll just simply show you what I've got uh, by uh, Neil Young. So yeah, I mean I've got his first couple of records on CD. Really hard to come by. Neil's first two albums uh, on vinyl. You know, very expensive. So the first one I've got is um, After the Gold Rush from 1970. And this is often one that's um, you know it kind of rides high on people's lists of favourite Neil albums. Great gatefold. Um, this is some kind of original copy. Once again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be giving information about which pressings I've got or anything like that because it's, it's not that kind of channel. Uh, so, um, but uh, yeah, after the Gold Rush, this one would have been bought from probably Oxfam, you know, back in the day. And um, you know, clearly it's it's you know it's an absolute classic. I don't need to say too much about it. Tell me why after the Gold Rush, only love can break your heart. Um, just you know, wonderful stuff. So. That's the first one, that's from 1970. The next one um, is from 1972, and this is the first Neil album I ever actually uh, heard back in the day. I had it on CD for many years, uh, then I tracked down a copy, well, I'd say tracked down a copy, stumbled across a copy, um, and I'm fairly certain this would have been in the Oxfam shop in uh, Headingley in Leeds. Uh, so this is Harvest, with a lovely uh, textured cover, and um, shot of, of Neil and the band on the back. Not Crazy Horse, of course. This was uh, a different configuration of musicians, Kenny Buttry on drums, a few other individuals. And this one's got a beautiful gatefold. Um, so, yeah, you know, Harvest, just one of the great all-time um, folk, rock, country type albums, just wonderful songs. Words, Alabama, Heart of Gold. Neil's commercial Zenith, I guess. It was after this that he kind of headed into the ditch, wasn't it? So, um, but um, yeah, just an absolute classic, 1972. Um, so the next one is the one that everybody tried to get into their collections back in the day and they couldn't because it was just completely out of print. You know, I, even on CD, you couldn't get on the beach on CD, but it did finally come out on CD and um, that, was, that would have been around about 2001, something like that. I finally got the CD and heard this record. And then a few years later, I picked up a reissue. So this is the only Neil album that I've got, which is actually um, a reissue. It's just a very straightforward reissue. It's not a gatefold or anything. I've never seen an original copy of this, but um, yeah, I mean, I guess I don't need one now. This is quite nice. It has um, I've got this insert. If you look on the inside of the of the jacket, there's actually um, a pattern on the inside there, which is quite nice. But um, this is possibly my favourite Neil album. It's just got such bleak stuff on it isn't it side one with revolution blues see the sky about to rain just wonderful absolutely fantastic song walk on the album opener great favorite and then on side two you've got those very kind of slow mournful introverted songs you know on the beach motion pictures uh, ambulance blues immortal stuff and um, fantastic album cover as well 
So yeah, that's on the beach from 74. And then the next one I've got from 75 uh, is Tonight's the Night. And this one's got a sticker on it, which I can't get off. I need to get some lighter fluid onto that. Oxfam, £5.99. That would have been the same Oxfam again. Headingly in Leeds, back in the, probably the late 90s. That's when I first got into Neil Young, really. First heard Neil Young in, would have been 1990. Uh, a friend of mine played me the Harvest album, which I loved. And um, after that, I used to pick his stuff up on the CD, as and when I could. And these records, you know, they used to pop up in charity shops. You can't really imagine it anymore, can you? But um, they did used to uh, appear. <clears throat> Once in a Blue Moon, again, just another classic. Tonight's the Night, Speaking Out, World on a String, Beautiful Songs, Mellow My Mind. This is the album that he recorded, you know, high on tequila and alcohol and God knows what else. There was a bit of a kind of, um, well, a certain late night ambience to this album, shall we say. And, um, yeah, there was all, all kinds of things going on in Neil's circle at the time, you know. Deaths of close friends and just rampant drug use and just... The trappings of fame and success, shall we say. So, tonight's the night, 1975. And then this next one, this I got this on CD um, back in my Leeds days, and I loved this one. I bought it from Oxfam, you know, one of his more guitar-y records. It's, um, it's got a certain looseness to it. It's just that fantastic crazy horse playing, you know, that kind of... They sound almost like amateurs in a way, um, but at the same time they don't, you know. Very just loose structures and... Part of my heart is on this one, beautiful acoustic song, and of course it ends with Cortez the Killer at the end, which just goes on for about 20 minutes. You've got Stupid Girl and, you know, Danger Bird. There's a certain atmosphere to this record, which I find um, very compelling. So that was 1975 anyway, and Zuma. Just three more to go. From 77, I've got this copy of uh, American uh, Stars and Bars. Um, this one came from Oxfam in Lancaster again maybe only two or three years ago, there was, I think somebody had died and the, the shop had been flooded with really great albums. And I did a vinyl update at the time where I showed all these records. I spent about £100 in Oxfam in about, you know, five minutes. Um, <clears throat> and this is one of the records that I bought on that day. The Zuma one might have come from the same hall. Don't quite remember now, but um, anyway, so that's uh, from 1977. A slightly lesser work. You know, really, it's not one of Neil's more memorable records. Having said that, when I listen to it, I always do enjoy it, you know. Uh, so, so yeah, 77. Which way up does it go? Who knows? Who knows? Um, right, so this next one, these next two are the most recent purchases. This one is 1978, and it is, comes a time. This one was bought from my local antique centre last year, I think. Um... I don't think I paid over the odds for it. It wasn't too expensive, but um, what was annoying is I'd only just bought it on CD. And I can't remember why I'd bought it on CD. It was one that I was reading about or I'd heard about. Bought it on CD, and then, you know, literally within weeks, I um, came across this vinyl version of it. It's a nice record. I sometimes find it to be a little bit soporific. Uh, you know, it's mainly a kind of singer-songwriter type one. You know, it's very low-key, a little bit maudlin at times, but, but, you know, I mean, there are some lovely songs on it. Um, the song Comes a Time itself is just, you know, beautiful. Lots of love is on here. Um, yeah, you know, a nice record. Comes a Time. Nice cover. From uh, 78. And that just leaves us with one more. So this, again, from the Antique Centre bought last year, I think. Um, from 1981, we've got Reactor. And uh, I talked about this record not so long ago in a video, just saying that I really enjoyed it. It, uh, it's again, it's one of the more rocky ones. It's back to the spirit of um, Zuma, I guess. It's, you know, it's a sort of kind of crazy horse type, um, you know, loose rocking kind of thing. It's got that slightly annoying song on it though, <laughs> T-Bone, which just has a very annoying lyric to it. But there's some, yeah, there's some good stuff on this. Surfer Joe and Mow the Sleaze is good fun. And Shots at the end is, is really apocalyptic with, you know, loads of gunshots going off. Uh, so that's Reactor, which is the last one uh, in my collection. I've not shown all the inserts and everything for these, but you know, you get the picture, don't you? Like I said, I've got lots of other Neil albums on CD, but um, you know, I'm not going to show the CDs as I get further into this uh, series. So um, there should be at least another five, five episodes of this. Uh, so uh, I'll try and get to those uh, as soon as I can. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave some comments and I'll see you soon.